Hello Rabbags, it's Jade. Welcome to your monthly survival show. Pretty much taking a look at all the releases, the big confirmed stuff that's been coming along, any big changes or any new announcements, as well as maybe DLC or big updates. July is a little bit of a quiet month for certain games, but there are some really good stuff that I'm looking forward to towards the end of the month, and August has a couple of nice little things that I'm looking forward to. So please, if you want to hear more about survival games, make sure you've got the bell dinged. Go and check out my Monday to Thursday live stream shows, 8 p.m. every night where I go through the daily survival news and let's get into everything that's happening in July and maybe August as well. As always, skip ahead because there's timestamps there for certain games you just don't want to hear about. Let's go. Grounded approaches its one year anniversary this month and they just snuck in the last update the Shrooms and Doom update on the 30th of June. It adds a bunch of brand new building pieces where you need to make your own mushroom bricks. And finally, pets. You can now get pet weevils and aphids. I think it's one of the most important and best updates Grounded has done so far. A big brand new revamped Broodmother boss fight and a whole host of new additions, tweaks and fixes. It really adds a whole lot more to Grounded. And over the last few months, I kind of realized I've not been putting more attention into this game as I should have done. And so I've been hitting it in a big way. Go and check out the rest of my guides and my Let's Play that I'm going on. Really enjoying it at the moment. Arid is a free to play survival game that you can try it for yourself right now. Made by a group of Netherlands students, they are pretty much making a desert survival game, wondering how it would be in the 30s if you crash landed and have to look for food and water as you progress through a bit more adventure style. If you like games like Green Hell, really challenging, really hard, this might be the one for you. Go and check out the video that will be out on Saturday for my show. And yeah, why not give it a whirl as it is free to play on Steam right now. Fallout 76 brand new update Steel Rain comes out on July the 7th. All platforms this is going to be adding even more storyline and a kind of semi beginnings I do believe for the Brotherhood of Steel. If I've got that wrong sue me I'm not a Fallout nerd. I'm sure it's going to add a whole host of brand new items, new weapons and new ways to play the game. Fallout has steadily been improving over the last year, but maybe still not enough for me to really give it a big full try. We know they've got planned expansions coming out next year, but I'd like to see them maybe add single player. That's when maybe I would probably jump back into it. Are you going to be checking out Steel Rain? Let me know July 7th. So yeah, it's a quiet month for releases. There's not much going on until the end of the month where we've got Tribes of Midgard. This is coming out on the 27th of July. It's a 10 player Viking co-op survival game where you'll explore procedurally generate your lands, taking on all sorts of mobs, creatures, and of course, giants, as well as defending your hometown. Exploration, base defense, and co-op action with lots of roleplay features, almost a bit Diablo-esque. Tribes of Midgard is one of my biggest games I'm looking forward to this year. It came out in a beta last year, I really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see what the full game is going to be like. It's going to be in a console exclusive at launch by looks of things, PlayStation 4, 5 and Steam only. But I'm totally ready to get my axe on with my rat bags as we take on these huge massive giants. Chernobyl is a new RPG survival game set in the aftermath of the Chernobyl explosion as you go against all sorts of supernatural creatures and beings while you're crafting weapons and exploring the silent dead zone. It's been in early access about a year and a half, maybe two now, and it's finally making its way to consoles and out of early access on July the 28th. It will be coming to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One, and it does look likely they're going to be doing next-gen versions as well. Hopefully that will all be happening. As of right now, there's only a loose term date of it actually arriving on console at that time, but that's when it comes out of early access on PC. So I would assume it would be the same time for consoles, as they recently showed off some trailer footage showcasing the game running on a PlayStation. If you've been watching these shows regularly, you've seen Starbase come up a number of times. That's because the developers have been delaying their release date for this early access huge space MMO. Think along the lines of space engineers, but adding a huge massive shared world where you can build your own spaceship or your own space station, have huge economies running for it, controlled by players and all sorts of really in-depth voxel and system based building. It's been worked on for a number of years and it's been in beta for nearly a year and a half so they've definitely been testing the systems. Let's hope that the launch when it does finally arrive will be pretty good. As you might expect this is only a Steam game only. 
So that's it for the confirmed releases for July. What could be potentially on its way? Well, Stranded Deep is finally adding multiplayer to the Xbox and PlayStation versions of the game. They've had it on Steam for a while now where you could join at least one friend, but it does look like they're going to be adding that fully to console versions and of course integrating it on PC in a better way too. The Steam version currently uses Steam's own method of connecting with players, whereas the Xbox and PlayStation version will be much more traditional co-op way to play the game. We're hoping maybe split screen as well. You can go and test it out for yourself on the Xbox Insider program if you do own it on Xbox, but don't worry, the multiplayer will be coming to the PlayStation versions of Stranded Deep 2. No word yet of an actual release, other than maybe later on this year, so it might be a bit more time, but I'm kind of hoping it will be a bit closer. Finally, a way to play this with your friends i think it'll be a good shout eternal cylinder the absolute bonkers survival game you'll ever see does look likely to be going gold very very soon in a recent email sending out to people that subscribe to the newsletter they indicated they're ready to go gold nearly just one final little update of polish they've been running betas for about six months now where you could take part and take a look at stuff that's going on and it does look like this unique survival game where you control these alien little creatures as you mutate gather more to your cause and try and escape this giant massive rolling pin Honestly, one of the strangest survival games going, but it's pretty in-depth. I gave it a whirl when it was part of the, one of the Steam festivals where you could actually try these games, and it's definitely got that survival element to it. You need to make sure you've got the right creatures to help you through, and you've got to make sure that you've got enough food and water to survive. So it could be potentially August, maybe beginning of September when we'll see this game release, given that they've got to go through certification as well. But for sure, I'll be taking a look at this when it does release. Come to Xbox, PlayStation and PC. Breakwaters is a game I'm really excited about. I've been showing it off to you. Developers gave me a key to show it off and it's in beta at the moment. They're just about to add base building to the game as well and it looks like this Kickstarter project is coming to early access very, very soon. Stated as a quarter three, quarter four release, I reckon it will be here maybe by September. This is a exploration game very much in a similar vein as maybe Valheim or with a little bit more mix of Breath of the Wild as you go and explore islands, float around on your ships or even take to the skies in an air glider. All while fighting giant golems and massive huge bosses while you're manipulating the water and the terrain to get treasure, upgrade your weapons and maybe craft your own little base. Very excited about this one, you're going to see lots of gameplay from me in the coming weeks so go and check out some of it right now to see more about Breakwater. Sadly, it looks like Little Devil Inside will be delayed. It's supposedly, it was meant to be coming out this month, but we haven't heard any news about the release of this unique survival game in a matter of six months or so. It really has gone very quiet, expecting maybe to see some sort of gameplay trailer reveal at E3, but nothing was shown. Across between Monster Hunter and a typical survival game, you'll be going and exploring small little pockets of areas where you'll discover all sorts of creatures and do missions seemingly for your master who will give you maybe some sort of rewards as you progress it seems to have a lot of story it's been worked on since 2014 originally scheduled to come out on the wii u it's finally coming out on the playstation systems and pc with other platforms to follow after a period of exclusivity but judging it's meant to release this month and no word has gone forward i don't expect it to actually happen i fully expect to see this game probably delayed even more until maybe next year I'm super, super hoping that they have just decided to go with a silent stealth launch. It's one of my top three most looking forward to games this year. So into the confirmed August releases and Icarus is launching on August the 11th. This brand new survival game made by the creator of DayZ, Dean Hall, is a big, big difference or departure from what you might expect. It's PvE focused as you crash land on a planet that was meant to be the new Earth. It's been terraformed somewhat and you have to survive against huge massive storms doing the usual kind of thing as you build up your bases and try and look for some exotic matter material, which is very valuable that can give you upgrades the quirk of it is that you need to escape this planet when the time comes in these instances otherwise you'll lose all of your progress all of the resources you've gained while on that planet think deep rock galactic but really hardcore that if you keep dying you may have real serious troubles it's got lots and lots of good points about it i've been showing it off and the devs have been really really advocating their own gameplay with lots of streams and lots of devlogs over the last few months 
was slight controversy though that they were originally planning to be free to play and then suddenly came up with it being a paid price game and they already got plans for DLC in fact if you want to buy the DLC ahead of its release you're that much of a believer in the game then it's going to set you back a hundred dollars I've got to say it's an unusual step going from free to play to outlining all your paid DLCs but I'm hoping it will take off as this does look like it's got potential let's hope the notion of landing on these planets survive against creatures like bears and wolves as well as grabbing the resources needed before time runs out is a hit. New World finally might be releasing after like two or three delays this Amazon huge MMO game will be finally making its way to everyone if you own it on PC on the 31st of August. If you pre-order the game you'll get access to the closed beta that begins on July the 20th and there has been technical betas running pretty much for the last year and a half. I'm intrigued by this game, I got flown out by Amazon to LA a couple of years ago now to check it out in its early development and it's been a long time since I really gave it a go so I'm really keen to see what improvements have been made to it. It started off as very much a survival MMO where they've reduced some elements of that but there's still plenty of crafting, still plenty of weapons and of course combat against other players in a revamped new way taking on others in a war mode as well as maybe being able to turn on roaming pvp to be honest some of that info may even be out of date it's been a while since i took a look at it so i'm definitely going to be doing some research ahead of its release on pc on 31st of august and that's about it for the actual firm releases. A few little bits of info about some of the big games and their updates. Rust on console is meant to be having its tech tree update very soon, probably in July. But it does look like that's in flux. They don't really have a roadmap inserted on. We do know the next one's going to be pretty much the tech tree update and adding some monuments that were kind of having teething problems just before launch. And we know that Seven Days to Die Alpha 20 is on its way. The devs have been ramping up lots of previews, lots of dev blogs showcasing what's new in this open world survival crafting game that's been going now for eight years in early access. But with no confirmed dates for that either, I've left it to the end of this video. Still no word either about Pray for the Gods. That was originally scheduled to come out at the end of April. Then it got pushed back to May. And finally they allowed it and just said we don't know when it's coming out just yet. But it is looking likely in the next few months for console. And there we go, a short one this month. Like I said, not a huge amount going on unless you're really looking forward to a particular couple releases. Hopefully we're going to get more news about some of this stuff that's happening. If there's anything I've missed, any brand new survival releases on Steam, Xbox or PlayStation, do leave it in the comment section down below. Or any big updates you think I should cover, absolutely comment as well. Until next time, Rat Bags, I'll see you later.